Alaska is home to many, many millions of breeding shorebirds in the summertime, and typically they all leave in the winter. It gets very cold here, and they fly away. We came to learn that there were, in fact, some shorebirds, namely rock sandpipers, that were spending the winter at very high latitudes. It was right under our noses. It was right out the front door here in Anchorage in Upper Cook Inlet. We just never knew they were there because we just assumed they couldn't be there, that it's too cold. And we started to explore their distribution and abundance throughout the whole winter period. Rock sandpipers in the, in the winter here in Cook Inlet are very ghostly pale. They blend in really well in the icy environment that they inhabit. I think it's probably an adaptation to help them be camouflaged and avoid detection out there. So these birds are making sort of a lateral northward migration and the standard characteristic of a northerly breeding shorebird is that they make long north-south migrations, not east-west, slightly north migrations. So it's really unusual for a shorebird to actually move to a higher latitude in the non-breeding season, like the Pribilof rock sandpiper does here in Upper Cook Inlet. When you see them on the ground, they're all fluffed up. 20% of their body mass in the winter is fat. Probably the most important thing that the fat does for them is that when they hit one of those really nasty cold snaps and they can't access the mud flats because they're frozen, they can burn that fat as an energy reserve and it helps get them over you know, the hump to the next warm spell when the mud flats open up again and they can forage. And with 20% body fat, we've, we've done some estimates that they can fast for four to five days. One time in December of 2007, we saw some had ice covering their lower legs and ice on their mantles and on their breast feathers. It was about five degrees that day and it was quite windy, so it was very brisk. And they dip their leg in the water and they pull it out and it freezes a little thicker and a little thicker. As I say, normally for a bird, that's a very, very bad sign that that means those birds are going to die. But these birds, if you didn't see the ice, you'd have no idea that they were impacted. They were feeding normally. They didn't seem to be affected at all. They were doing fine. The rock sandpipers here in Cook Inlet aren't fat year-round. They only get fat in the winter. They get really large breast muscles so that they can shiver really efficiently, and their livers get big in the winter so they can digest food more quickly. They grow more feathers in the winter, but in the summertime when they don't need fat, big livers or lots of feathers, they get rid of all that stuff. So it's a phenotypically flexible adjustment to their environmental conditions. Well, they're also very clever. They've found an incredibly abundant, high-quality food resource and that's really why these birds are here. Birds don't have teeth. They don't crush food in their bills. They use their muscular gizzard to crush their food. Rock sandpipers, in the breeding season, they feed on small invertebrates, so mosquitoes and small bees and flies. Those are pretty easy to crush. But in the winter, what we found in Cook Inlet is that these birds are feeding entirely on small little clams, and these clams have a hard shell, and they need to crush that shell. So these are teeny tiny little clams, and they're everywhere, and these birds have the ability to detect the clams with little pressure sensitive pores in the tip of their bill. They can find as many clams as they can possibly swallow, but they have to take a digestive pause for their gizzard to actually crush these shells. And then that passes into their intestines where they can extract the flesh from the shells. So that was a really interesting find for us that the Macoma here are of really incredible quality and that ultimately is what lets these birds spend the winter here. One of the more interesting results at the end of my PhD research was to come to find that there really isn't anything too special about rock sandpipers other than that they are just tough little birds.